Hey guys, this is Dal Phoenix, and today I wanted to talk about some Sonic memories because as you're watching this video today, as it's coming out, today is the release date for Sonic Mania. And you know what? I would really love to play Sonic Mania. I pre ordered the collector's edition from Amazon. But Amazon decided, you know what, let's not do release date shipping for this particular game. So I'm not getting my copy until Thursday, even though I pre-ordered the game almost a year ago. So much for supporting Sega, right? But anyways, let's talk about some positive Sonic memories, since uh, I won't be able to play the game today. So I might as well at least reminisce through the many years of great Sonic goodness that I've got to have, as well as you guys as well. I mean, Sonic has been kind of an up-and-down franchise, but overall, the reason why people still love Sonic so much is because there are still a number of great titles available for the series. So I want to kind of talk about my experiences with Sonic the Hedgehog. So, first of all, whenever I got into Sega Genesis, it was before Sonic even came out. I never owned a Sega Genesis, but I had a friend that owned a Sega Genesis near the launch, and his family, I guess they traded in the NES and all that good stuff, towards getting a Sega Genesis, and they kind of just moved on from Nintendo. And I always thought that was really fascinating, because I didn't even really know, other than like Nintendo and Atari, that there was other game companies, until I saw this Sega Genesis at his house, you know. And we played a bunch of nice Sega Genesis games, like Golden Axe, Rambo, uh, freaking uh, Altered Beast, of course, you know, and so on. But Sonic was probably the very first Sega Genesis game that really made me want to have a Sega Genesis. Uh, whenever, I think I was like in the fourth grade or something like that, third grade, something like that. I forget which, which time it was. It probably was the fourth grade, because that's when Sonic 2 would have came out. And we had some new neighbors, and they had a Sega Genesis, and they would bring over their Genesis with Sonic 2. And I was just impressed at the overall design of the game. It was such a fast and fluid, well-paced game with really memorable level designs, excellent music and characters, and it was just really fun. And unlike Mario, Sonic had an attitude. And that was really cool for kids back in the day. You know how Sonic would be kind of like tapping his foot whenever you're not playing, like he's impatient, he's like waiting for the player to come? Well, a little story, I actually got in trouble because of that little animation. Because I actually really liked that animation a lot. And there was like some time in the fourth grade I was waiting for something to happen. Uh, like we were waiting for recess to start for our class or something like that. I forget what it was exactly. And so I was actually tapping my foot like Sonic. And uh, I guess a teacher like really got annoyed about it. And I actually ended up getting in trouble over it, which whatever, man. But... <laughs> It's just kind of funny, you know, that I really took to Sonic as a character as a young child. And, of course, um, as I got a little bit older, I would play, like, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. I eventually got my own Sega Genesis to play these on, of course. And then, strangely enough, the Sega Saturn didn't have much anything to do with Sonic at all. And uh, people wonder why Sega Saturn failed. Well, that's probably one major reason why, Sega. You really screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> Fuck the dog, rather, right? But anyways, uh, Sega made good with that and brought Sonic into the 3D realms of Sonic Adventure, which was an excellent game for its time. It might not have aged as well nowadays, knowing how 3D Sonic games play, but back then it was a mind-blowing experience being able to play Sonic in 3D. Uh, the levels were huge, you know, compared to the other Sonic games, and there were so many things you could do. You had all kinds of other characters that you could play as. Um... Some you didn't really care about, like Biggs the Cat, of course. But there were some other interesting characters, like that robot. I forget the robot's name. But it was a really fun time, and I really enjoyed uh, Sonic Adventure at that time. It was a lot of fun. And, of course, I happened to get my Sega Dreamcast around the time that it was starting to die out. You know, I had a false hope that, hey, you know what? Maybe Sega will, like, be like, haha, I got you, we're not canceling the Dreamcast, we just said that so we get a bunch of people to buy it at a cheap price, and then we, boo, we sold a bunch of units, and you guys can have at them, you know, have at these Sega Dreamcasts and plenty of new games, but that didn't happen, obviously, Sega kind of stuck to their guns on canceling the Dreamcast, but that's another story entirely, so anyways, we've had a bunch of Sonic games all through the years, Sega has really 
push this franchise a lot more than anything else that they've ever put out. And that's for good or bad, of course, because we've had a lot of good Sonic games, but probably an equal number of bad ones as well. You know, of course, I remember the very first time that I played Shadow the Hedgehog on the PlayStation 2. Because, you know, I thought that Shadow the Hedgehog was kind of a cool and edgy character, and I really liked Ratchet and Clank, and I really kind of liked the idea of playing a Sonic-type character, but with guns like Ratchet and Clank. I thought that was a really cool idea, and it controlled like a mess. I mean, it was a complete disaster. It was like skating on oil with how bad those controls were. But, um, nonetheless, you know, some people did like Shadow the Hedgehog. I was not a fan at all. But that didn't, like, stop me from going into Sonic, because, oh no, when the Xbox 360, I got that, one of the games I was looking forward to was Sonic the Hedgehog, as it was titled, you know, and in the cutscenes and everything like that made it look so amazing. It looked, it was like a huge leap from the uh, previous gen Sonic games, and, you know, it just looked a lot more exciting than what we had previously seen with the 3D Sonic games, but as we know, Sonic the Hedgehog, which is now aptly loved as Sonic 06, is anything but a classic game in the franchise. But nonetheless, it was a game that marked a huge bear of history on the series, and so we have to remember it for what it is. You know, at that point I was kind of fed up with Sonic, and so... When Sonic Unleashed came out, I was like, I'm not even bothering buying this game. I'll just rent it. You know, I'm just going to stick with a rental, because we still had rental stores like Blockbuster back in this era. And it was actually not bad. In fact, the 3D stages in Sonic Unleashed were arguably the best that Sonic ever had at that point for the 3D stages. They were really good, and they're still top-notch to this day, in my opinion. The Werehog stages, though... Yeah, they kind of suck, but they weren't, like, bad, like Shadow or the other games. They were actually starting to get better. And then, of course, by the time we got to Sonic Generations, which is probably the quintessential 3D Sonic game, because it was an excellent mesh of the classic 2D Sonic that we know and love, along with the 3D Sonic, but in kind of a nice, brighter light, you know, at, you know, mainly highlighting the best parts of the 3D Sonic games and kind of trying to eschew as much as possible of uh, the uh, crappy parts. And so Sonic Generations is one I highly recommend if you never played it. Now, I hadn't really played any Sonic games since then. I never played like Sonic Lost World or Sonic Boom or anything like that, but I'm really looking forward to Sonic Mania and eventually when I get it, I'm sure I'll have a really good time. Uh, but I wanted to kind of share with you guys some stories about my Sonic memories and kind of my feelings overall as far as the franchise and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like it and share it with your friends if you did. And if not, well, whatever. Uh, and of course, if you guys haven't had a chance, I started a new podcast. So check that out. It's called DP and Me. Matter of fact, you can listen to it not on just YouTube here, which is my previous video, by the way. But you can also go on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, as well as Podomatic to listen to it. Check out some links in the description. But till then, down Phoenix out.